हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम अगेन आई एम डॉक्टर दिति नाइक फ्रॉम द डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ स्ट्रक्चरल इंजीनियरिंग संजीवनी कॉलेज ऑफ इंजीनियरिंग कोपरगाव सो इन दिस वीडियो वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट स्ट्रेस वी हैव ऑलरेडी डिस्कस्ड अबाउट स्ट्रेसेस हाउ द शेयर स्ट्रेसेस आर कॉम्प्लीमेंट्री एक्सेट्रा सो हियर वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट एनालिसिस ऑफ स्ट्रेन और वॉट इज मीन बाय स्ट्रेन एट ए पॉइंट what is meant by strain at a point now as we know from the subject strength of materials or uh, which we are studying in the second year of engineering strain can be defined as change in any unit dimension per unit original dimension okay and we are using this sign for strain epsilon change in any unit dimension per unit original dimension is called as strain it is denoted by epsilon it is unitless quantity there are two types of strains namely extensional strain acting in x and y directions and second one is shear strain which act in a plane say xy plane with reference to the figures given below okay so we are having a element dimensions are delta x in x direction and delta y in y direction now if there is a change in this dimension delta x okay so this change in dimension in delta x is shown by delta ux this is change in x direction similarly change in y direction is denoted by delta u y right so here figure a this is figure a which shows linear strain in x direction because there is change in x direction while figure b it shows linear strain in y direction because there is change in y direction while figure c shows shear strain in xy plane because the distortion is taking place in xy plane plane bounded by x and y axis and his xy plane now above strains are two dimensional because the figure is two dimensional now here using the uh, definition which we have studied in elementary strength of material epsilon x is equal to delta ux upon delta x remember delta ux is change in delta x in x direction similarly epsilon y strain in y direction is equal to delta uy upon delta y so these are the extensional strain or linear strain or strain in x and in y direction respectively now let us come to the next type the shear strain in xy plane is denoted by gamma xy is denoted by gamma xy shear strain is defined by change in the initial right angle between two line elements originally parallel to x and y axis so how one can define shear strain it is nothing but the change in initial right angle between two line elements which are originally parallel to x and y axis for example here in this element this is delta x and this is delta y the initial angle between these two line elements is 90 degree now when the distortion is taking place as shown by the dotted lines definitely there will be change in the initial right angle between these two line elements and this change in the initial right angle is called as shear strain of course in xy plane because here we are considering xy plane only okay now the change in the delta x this side is this angle it distort and now this is theta 1 and the angle made by this side with original position is theta 2 sorry this is theta 1 and this is theta 2 because of this angular distortion theta 1 and theta 2 this is 
change or displacement of this point corner point in y direction delta u y we have already studied it and here this point this is the original position of this corner point it moves to delta u x displacement in x direction or sorry or deformation in x direction now what is the total change in the angle previous previously the angle was 90 degree now what is the change the change is original angle 90 minus 90 minus into bracket 90 minus total theta 1 plus theta 2 and hence the total change in angle is equal to theta 1 plus theta 2 and theta 1 plus theta 2 is nothing but shear strain according to the definition. Now if theta is very small and measured in radians as we know we can write theta is equal to tan of theta we can write theta is equal to tan of theta. Now coming to this figure we can write tan of theta 1 is equal to delta ui upon delta x. Similarly we can write tan of theta 2 is equal to opposite side delta ux upon the adjacent side that is delta y. Therefore the shear strain in xy plane is equal to change in the initial right angle between two line elements that is theta 1 plus theta 2. Hence gamma xy is equal to theta 1 plus theta 2. But theta 1 is equal to delta ui upon delta x and theta 2 is equal to delta ux upon delta y. Because we can write theta 1 tan of theta 1 is equal to theta 1 tan of theta 2 is equal to theta 2. And in this way shear strain can be defined. Now rectangular strain components linear. Let epsilon x, epsilon y and epsilon z be the linear strains at a point in x, y and z directions and gamma xy, gamma yz and gamma xz be the shear strains in xy, yz and xz planes respectively. Now you know the notation which I have used. Gamma xy is shear strain in xy plane. Similarly, gamma yz is shear strain in yz plane and gamma xz is shear strain in xz plane. Okay. Analogous to the rectangular stress components which we have already studied, the six strain components are called the rectangular strain components at a point. So, we are calling the six stress components as rectangular component of stress. Similarly, we can call these six strain components as rectangular strain components at a point and therefore strain at a point strain at a point the to define strain at a point completely at any point there are six strain components namely epsilon x epsilon y epsilon z linear components gamma xy gamma yz and gamma xz these are the shear components this is because we can write gamma xy is equal to gamma yx, gamma xz is equal to gamma zx, gamma yz is equal to gamma zy. This is similar to the complementary shear stresses. Okay, And hence the nine strain components are reduced to the six strain components. Epsilon or strain at a point can be defined by these nine components epsilon x gamma xy gamma xz gamma yx epsilon y gamma yz but we can write gamma xy is equal to gamma yx and hence the nine components are now reduced to the six component here it is written it is written similar to stresses gamma xy is equal to gamma yx and so on so nine strain components can be reduced to the six strain components and hence the strain at a point can be defined with the help of six strain components. Now let 
u v and w with the displacements at a point in x y and z direction respectively then epsilon x can be written as epsilon x is equal to daba u by daba x daba u by daba x epsilon y can be written as daba v by daba y epsilon z can be written as daba w by daba z above are the linear strains in x y and z direction similarly the shear stresses can be written as gamma x y is equal to daba u by daba y plus daba v by daba x gamma y z is equal to daba v by daba z plus daba w by daba y gamma x z is equal to daba u by daba z plus daba w by daba x so in this way we can write these six equations of strain now what is, what are the compatibility equations of strain the displacement of a point in a solid body can be expressed by displacement vectors capital u which has components u v and w along the three axes x y and z so u is the displacement vector and when vector is there it must have components so components of u this is capital u r u v and w along x y and z components the deformation is specified by the six strain components epsilon x epsilon y epsilon z gamma x y gamma y z and gamma x z the three displacement components and six rectangular components are related by six strain displacement relations which we have already studied epsilon x is equal to daba u by daba x this is for epsilon y daba v by daba y epsilon z is equal to daba w by daba z and the shear stresses are gamma x y is equal to daba u by daba y daba v by daba x gamma x z sorry gamma y z is equal to daba v by daba z plus daba w by daba y gamma x z is equal to daba u by daba z plus daba w by daba x and thus the three displacement components u v and w and six rectangular strain components these are related to each other with the help of these six strain displacement equations these are the six equations strain displacement equations and these equations are very useful while solving the problems in theory of elasticity one can determine the six strain components above six strain components from the three displacement components easily if we know u v and w we can easily determine the six strain components simply we have to differentiate them simply we have to differentiate the displacements but if the reverse is asked that is determination of three displacement components from six strain components then the problem will be complicated if it is asked to find u v and w using epsilon x epsilon y epsilon z as well as the three shear strains then it will be difficult as it involves integrating the six equations thus the six, six equations relating the six strain components to each other are developed and these equations are called as strain compatibility equations or continuity equations so let us take a recap now we are having three displacement components and six strain rectangular strain components these are related to each other with the help of these six equation linear equations linear strain three equations and shear strains three equations okay and these six equations are called as strain compatibility equations or continuity equations thank you